Coming up in this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the latest lender rate cuts and in some cases, some increases. We'll be taking a look at the latest lender criteria changes and what that might mean for people that are applying for mortgages. Also in this week is a look at the latest swap rate chart, the latest UK house building data, the government's idea behind a mortgage where you only need a 1% deposit. And finally, a look at when the first Bank of England base rate cut might happen this year. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the UK Mortgage Market Insights for the weekend in the 26th of January 2024. I hope I find you all well. So first up this week, let's take a look at those lenders that have made criteria changes this week. First of all, we've got Empowered. They've made some improvements to their foreign national criteria. They now accept applicants with a mortgage up to 90% loan to value. There's no minimum income requirement and there is no minimum time in the UK requirement. Next, we've got the Kensington. They've made some improvements to their self-employed mortgages. They'll now look at mortgages up to 85% loan to value with just one year self-employment figures. They will now also consider debt management plans for people that are looking for a mortgage. And they've also made a few other criteria changes as well. HSBC now accept part and part applications. That means that they will accept mortgages where there is an element of interest only and an element of repayment as the repayment method. Halifax, they've also made some improvements to their foreign national criteria. Hodge have also made some improvements to their professional mortgage criteria, adding more occupations. They'll also now take mortgages up to a maximum age of 80, and they've made some interest-only improvements as well. NatWest have lowered the stress test on their buy-to-let mortgages, meaning that mortgage mortgages are affordable for more people. And lastly, the Leeds Building Society have introduced a new range that means more mortgages will be available to people that have got a less than desirable credit history. So this week, the government have reported that they're going to be potentially introducing a scheme with a 99% mortgage. That means that you only need to put in a 1% deposit. This idea has been floated by the government prior to the spring budget in March and is aimed at helping first-time buyers and those who are finding it difficult to save for a deposit to actually get onto the property ladder with the need for only this 1% deposit. Now, personally, I don't think this is a very good idea. There are already affordability issues and this will just create more. And there is a real severe potential for negative equity because if you're only putting in a 1% deposit, it doesn't take very long or very much of a reduction in house prices for you to find yourself in a position where your house is worth less than what your mortgage is. Now, clearly this idea has been floated ahead of this spring budget to gauge the feeling of the British public to see if this would be a potential vote winner or a vote loser for the election that is due later this year. It's clearly one of the government's ideas at winning votes and staying in power. But I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Do you think this is a good idea or not? Is it something that you would use if you're a first time buyer? Or do you just think this is potentially gonna create more problems in the UK housing market? And in my opinion, I think the one problem that we've got is a lack of housing. Why don't the government start to look at schemes where they build more affordable housing, enabling more people to get onto the property ladder in the first place. In my opinion, that would solve all the problems that the UK face when it comes to housing. But please do let me know your opinions. That brings us very nicely onto this next article, which is the UK government's housing supply report covering July to September of last year. This completely reiterates what I just made in the previous point about the house building or the lack of it being, in my opinion, the key problem in the UK. As you can see, according to building control figures between 1st of July and 30th of September 2023, the number of dwellings where building work has already started in the UK on site was 21,300. This seasonally adjusted figure is a 68% decrease when compared to the previous quarter and is a 52% decrease when compared to the same quarter of the previous year, so 2022. The number of dwellings completed was 39,990. And again, this seasonally adjusted figure is a 1% increase when compared to the previous quarter, but a 5% decrease when compared to the same quarter in 2022. So clearly an indication that there is not enough housing being built in the UK. And in my opinion, as I said, this is where the problem of the UK housing market starts from. So please, can the UK government do something for one that will mean that there is more affordable housing built for first-time buyers? So before we look at the lenders that have made rate reductions this week, and I also cover off when we might potentially see the first base rate cut from the Bank of England, I want to just take a quick look at the latest swap rate chart from yesterday evening, and it doesn't paint a good picture. If we look at the current column, the 24th of January, and compare it to a month ago, the 27th of December, you can quite clearly see that swap rates have increased. So despite the fact that we are still seeing a few lenders decreasing mortgage rates, 
we are now starting to see some lenders pull their rates from the market and actually increase them. So the fixed rates that are available to you as customers are actually now higher than they were a few days ago. We all know that there's tension in the Middle East and the Red Sea, and this is having an impact on inflation. As we saw with the most recent figures, there had been a slight increase. This is having an impact on the markets and on the swap rates and the gilt yields. And in turn, that has an impact on the rates that lenders will be offering you. So if you're talking to a mortgage broker and you're looking at your potential mortgage options for either purchasing a property or remortgaging a property, if you've been offered a rate by your broker, please just take that rate because that is a worst case scenario. Rates could change and they could go up, meaning that you'll be paying more if you don't act quickly. So please act as soon as possible on the advice of your mortgage broker because they really do have your best interests at heart. So the next MPC meeting is next Thursday, the 1st of February, and all eyes are going to be on that and the report that comes out afterwards because that is actually more important than the decision itself. It's widely expected that when the Bank of England do meet next week, that interest rates will be kept on hold at 5.25%. However, when will the first rate cut be? As you can see in this article, it appears that the Bank of England are set to start on their path towards interest rate cuts. And we will all be listening keenly to what the governor says after the meeting next week to see if there have been any changes in the policymakers' decisions. Did any of the members vote for a decrease in the base rate this time round? And what is the commentary looking forward to the rest of 2024? It's expected that there could be up to four base rate cuts in this year. And all of this is because inflation is slowing and wage growth is improving. So things are feeling calmer. Things are looking better. But when will that first rate cut be? I predicted that it would be in May. And for now, I'm still going to stick by that. But of course, we do keep a keen eye on all the data that comes out every week just to see if our opinions might change. I'd love to hear your views as to when you think the first Bank of England base rate cut might be and how many there might be this year. Where will we end the year? What will the Bank of England base rate be at the end of 2024? And lastly, the bit that everybody waits for, and that's the lender rate decreases or increases that there have been this week that we've seen. So we've got this week, Barclays have made rate reductions, so have Principality on their product transfer range. Virgin have... Molo have made reductions on their buy-to-let range. Vida Home Loans and Kensington have also made rate reductions. Santander made some rate increases this week. Nationwide made rate reductions, and we did a video covering that. The Family Building Society have made rate reductions. Skipton have. Kent Reliance have on their product transfer range. Nottingham Building Society made rate reductions. West One have also made rate increases. Accord have improved their buy-to-let product transfer range. Atom Bank and BM Solutions have also made rate reductions. There have been another couple of lenders that have announced rate removals at the end of this week, and the potential is that they could be putting their rates up early next week. So watch this space. But just goes to show, like we said, when we covered the swap rate chart, that things aren't always guaranteed to be moving in a downward direction. Some lenders are increasing their rates. So like I said, if you've been offered a rate by your mortgage broker, please take it as quickly as possible. And that brings us to the end of this week's episode. So I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. As always, your interest in the channel is greatly appreciated. Please do consider subscribing if you like the content that we produce. The links to any relevant articles will be in either the comments or the show notes. Please do leave any thoughts and comments below. Have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Take care.